Hey, it's Wednesday. It's eight o'clock on the East Coast. That means it's time for this week at Gear Report, where we talk about all the reviews that we published since the show last week, as well as upcoming items that we're going to review. Why are you shaking your head, TJ? <laughs> I, I was going to try to mouth, mouth over the words, so it'd be like, I was like a dummy, but I didn't get the script. Yeah. This is kind of hard to do here because I can't see real well, but I promised I was, yeah, I can't even see the buttons on the screen to click here. Bring out I, had to I thought this made me look better. It does. Yeah. It, it does. You're supposed to use the beak to click on the buttons there, Jeff. That, that's ah. what well, the problem is I've got the two little eye holes here. I can't see shit through them. <laughs> but, um, I am committed to wear this to Walmart or Food Lion or yes. whatever. So I had uh, posted a link a, few, a couple days ago when I ordered this. So if you want to see the link, go check out our social media and scroll back a day or two and you have a link where you can go get yourself one of those masks. But uh, I was kind of happy about having it, so I had to model it. Yeah, I think you need to soften it up a little bit so it, the, the eyes flatten out on you and, and uh, you can see better out of it. Yeah, see, he wears leather mask all the time. He knows all the ins and outs of, uh, you know, how they work. Yeah. No, not so much. I'm, my my, I'm my thinking uh, times ha are over, so I've forgotten all about it. Hey, hey Jeff, H hate the player, not the game. <laughs> yeah, hey, listen, I'm not judging anyone. <laughs> Y'all do what makes you happy. What you do um, behind closed doors or or on a podcast, you know, it's all up to you. It's all up to you. Do what makes you happy. Um, although on this one, we do try to keep it somewhat family friendly ish. So, uh, <laughs> where are my plague peeps at? Yeah. All right. So anyhow, um, that was, that was a good way to kind of ease into the show today. I think we always kind of stall a little bit for the first couple minutes and give time for the notifications to go out. Um, if you're seeing this, if you're early, in the show, that probably means you have already clicked the little notification bell in YouTube so that you get notified whenever we go live. Um, if you're watching this in replay, now would be a good time to go click that notification bell so that you'll be notified when we go live. Uh, that's how it works. All right. So uh, while we're waiting for people to join us, Let's go around the room and do all the introductions and all that stuff. And we'll start with, uh, it says Frozen TJ, which I believe means he's going to sing a song from his favorite movie. That's, that's, that's not going to happen, but it's just, it's, it's just very cold down here, Jeff. Like, you know, people, people bust out the, the Uggs and the sweaters when it drops below 60. And it's, uh, it was a bit brisk out. Wow. 68 degrees today. Well, I was going to say since March. <laughs> Did you say 68 degrees? Yes. Just wow. 59. It was close. And you don't have a parka on. No, I got I got a little I got a little, little ceramic heaters going down here under my legs. Keep my legs warm. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. I'm not. You know what? You just threw a softball out there. I'm not. Even, I'm not even swinging. All right. Yeah. We're gonna keep it family friendly here. All right. Hey everybody, welcome to the Gear Report Reviews YouTube extravaganza that is our show. Thanks yeah. for stopping by, let your friends know, make sure that you're uh, sending us your request of anything you want to see reviewed, especially for a holiday season. Tis the season, they say. But uh, thanks thanks for stopping by and hope you enjoy the uh, the madness that is our show. Truer words have never been spoken. Hello, everybody. Uh, this is uh, Jose Juan or JJ. Um, glad that you guys are here with us uh, this December. Yeah, it's starting to get cold, and uh, out of all of us, TJ is probably suffering the worst. Yeah. Today. Right. But hey. yesterday, was it yesterday that, that we had a Karami sickle up in the mountains or the day before? Yeah. I, don't, I don't think I've ever had a red face or worn every pair of clothes I owned at the same time until yesterday. It was, it was, I was, I was too cold to eat, Jeff. Too cold to eat. Wow. I know. I, or anything else that I would love to do. Yeah. So, 
Karen here. We're just glad to be here. Can't wait to. Uh, first off, this causes me to shop when we're done. I buy all the stuff that you talk about. Um, so we can't wait to hear about it and can't wait to talk about some of our products. <laughs> good, good. And uh, and you should have a few to talk about, too. So that's that's awesome. So I'll tell you what, let's I want to start with. Oh, I'm looking at the different tabs I have open to find the right one. Oh, I don't think I opened that one. What in the world? All right, I'm going to open this one and then go to StreamYard. I've seriously got to talk to these StreamYard people about making it easier to select the Chrome tab that I want to show. I can't find it. There it is. Okay, here it comes. Boom. All right, so the reason I brought this one up first and you know what? I am even, if I can figure out how to do it, bam, even made it bigger. So all the people went away so that we can focus on the first live stream interview that we've done. Uh, obviously, we do this show on Wednesday nights. Uh, Pickle and Mike do the camping chat sometimes on Thursday evening. So that's another live stream that we do. And I've added a new series. I think the series is already getting a little divergent on me. Uh, I thought it was just going to be one series of live brand interviews, but I got so many requests for different um, Humvee related companies to reach out and do live interviews with them that it, this may split, you know, cause I thought it was just going to be, we'll interview any company in, in the outdoor space. So camping gear and firearm stuff and gun accessories and off-road stuff, and we'll just do all of them. But it's looking like the first show that we did in was in the Humvee space with damage control customs, that interview um, that was Monday evening. That, that that is generating enough demand within the Humvee community that we're going to have a series of just Humvee brands that we interview. And then we'll also do other types of companies as well. So um, I've put the call out publicly. I'm, I'm also going to mention it here within the panel. Any companies that you want to talk to, let's get them in and do some live, um, do a live stream interview with them. And uh, I, I started with that Monday time slot thinking, okay, Monday, maybe that'll work. Maybe we do you know, seven, eight o'clock on Mondays. And then the next company coming up is going to be Craft Holsters, which we've got a few reviews from Craft Holsters. And because they're in Europe, that time didn't work. We're to do Thursday, uh, not tomorrow, a week from tomorrow at 9 a.m. Eastern time. It's going to be in the evening for them, early for us. We're going to do it live. I know people who have real jobs probably won't be able to join us. Hopefully someone can. And then, um, you know, that'll spice up that, that interview a little bit, and it'll be available in replay. Um, obviously, this one here, Damage Control Customs, um, has a variety of Humvees that uh, Ruben has customized. This one has a really awesome, very large set of... Uh, headlights on the other end and some Christmas ornaments on the back. And uh, we talked about what Ruben does there at Damage Control Customs with, uh, uh, he can help you buy a Humvee. He has Humvees for sale that he's bought and already done the work on. He has parts for sale. If you want to rent one for a commercial or, or TV show or movie or whatever, he's got some for that. Um, he, and, and he also contributes sometimes uh, with articles and videos on Gear Report. Uh, and you can watch that uh, live stream. I think it was about an hour and 39 minutes. And we finally said, all right, we're going to have to cut it off. Uh, it was going pretty well, though. So um, everyone, please, uh, on the panel, think about what companies you'd like to talk to. I did this first one. But we can absolutely spread it around and, you know, I can be a part of them with you. You can interview someone yourself, whatever. We'll work it out. We'll do whatever makes sense, depending on who you're talking to and what market it's in and, and what technology, you know, challenges we have and that kind of thing as well. I wonder if the notice went out today because uh, the chat is much lighter than normal. Has anyone checked to see if we're actually um, Well, I did. There? Yeah, yeah, we're on. I just checked uh, to see if there's any other conflicting uh, shows, but I don't see anything, so that's kind of odd. 
I ran people off, shit. apparently. The mask scared them, Jeff, right off the bat. They're done. They checked it scared out. scared me. Yeah. I it mean, looks like a chick. We were afraid. It made me uncomfortable. So <laughs> I, I could see why it would scare people away. Yeah. No, no shame for them. All right. So let's see. Let's move on down the line. And I'm going to navigate behind the scenes here to a different article. Let's see. How many things? Uh, let's see. I think we're going to go. Let's do this. We'll, we'll do TJ with the Odin Works M Lock hand stop review. And then I'll do. I'll do two, and then we'll do Karami, Fireside Outdoor Pop-Up Fire Pit. And then I've got one or two more to do, and then we'll get into new stuff. So, so that'll give us kind of an order so everyone can get ready. You can start stretching and warming up and whatever you need to do before we, uh, before we get to you. And uh, let's see, TJ, there's the – oh, I did the wrong one. Uh, I swear. My right. lack of competence is – really it's the cold weather so what happens there we go yeah well i got distracted because see i just got back to the desk a few minutes ago uh when you when you sent me the note asking for the link tj i was uh i was still a few miles from home oh, <laughs> i was out uh under the humvee uh james was putting the transmission back in and i had to leave he's like oh yeah all i've got left is this heat shield and uh, hook the fluids, uh, put the fluids back in. Oh, I hope he remembered the geared fan drive because I didn't see him put those bolts in. Um, regardless, he's hoping to test drive it tonight and some more test driving tomorrow, and then it'll be ready for me to pick up and use again. So I'm pretty stoked about that. And that's going to be distracted and probably off my game, and definitely rambling. So I think I've given you time to get up to speed already. As usual. Yeah. All right, right TJ. It's on you now. Are we good now? All right. Uh, yeah. yeah, the Odenworks uh, M-Lock hand stop. Just a, a – you know, I ordered uh, the the hand stop. I got the the uh, extended mag release. I got the safety selector. So I ordered a bunch of stuff in the blue for the Odenworks. We're going to – I'm putting together a blue AR. And, uh, yeah, it's just a, you know, neat little uh, angled hand stop. It's small. It's lightweight. You know, I threw it on the DBX, and you know, I was shooting one-handed at the range today. It was, yeah. you know, it added barely any weight to it at all. So it's, uh, you know, it functions. I like it. It's going on. It's going on the Blue AR though, not the, the DBX. Gotcha. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Um, so, so do people like crowd around you when you're shooting the DBX? What is that? Yeah, the guys at the range were like, you know, like, oh, can we see that? So they looked at it, and uh, they're like. Pretty cool. And then I was out there. I, I shot a gangster style today, so I got some video on that. That's awesome. So, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's just like shooting a pistol. Nice. It's, it's that light. And so uh, that's how I shot it today with the uh, the Swamp Fox optic and then the the hand stop on it today. Yeah. So I, I took I took the EOTech five twelve off of it. It looked a little <laughs> absurd. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of. Um... Oh, what's it called? It's uh, it's that little one that you've got, Jose Juan. The the uh, was it CMR? It's not a CMR, is it? CMR, the Keltec. Is it CMR? Yeah. Oh, right, right. CMR is the the little carbine, yeah. and PMR yeah. is a pistol, right? Yeah, the pistol's the PMR. Yep. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I had them kind of mixed up in my the head. Mags work for both. That's great. It's mm -hmm. good planning. Interesting. Okay. Oh. G, uh, G23 has joined us and already observed that I did not shave today. So that's good. People people keep me honest with the razor. It's, it's the camera that shows everything. everything. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. If I revert back to the built-in webcam, I like, get much lower like, definition. You can't tell that I hadn't shaved. But, yep. you know, I upgrade the camera better quality for you guys and instead it's more like oh he looks homeless so yeah you can't win right take control and start to party yeah you know it is so many times people have um suggested 
someone else needs to take over. It shouldn't be me. And, uh, you know, I'm, but I'm a, I'm a dictator, so I don't really let that happen too much. All right. So where are we going? I'm going to talk about who, all right, who, who's got the gun grips that was published this week. Let's see. Cause I, Oh, Mitch has got one. That would be little old me. Little old Mitch. All right. Yep. I uh, took the gun grips from, uh, the gun grips, custom <laughs> G10s, put them on my um, Springfield Armory TRP. I oh. like the, the OD green, and uh, you can see for it's just a quick review. Super easy to install, adds a, a little flair to the 1911. And I chose the OD green because uh, U.S. Army. Yeah. All right. And I was asked the question, uh, and again, I won't name names, but. Uh, we're given stuff from people to review, which is what we like to do and give an honest review and be straightforward, but ask the question why it wasn't the best because we have yet to find the best of the best. Keep oh, like stuff. Why it was a four out of five and not a five out of five. Correct. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So I'm glad you mentioned that. That gives me an opportunity to show something that I don't know that I have shown yet here live uh, make sure. you haven't we've, we've talked about that i think i've talked about it but i hadn't actually shown it to people right. so you can yeah. go up on the the very top at orange bar uh, about gear report look at gears rating explained and it will tell you that a, a perfect five gears that is perfection we've never seen a perfect five and likely never will it becomes yeah, and you can go down through here, and I'll tell you, some brands get pissy if they get a three, but three is meets expect is pretty much meets expectations, right? Yep. They've just gotten used to Amazon reviews where they they feel like if they give someone a product, then they'll get a five star review in return for it. And uh, more about you know, I I know some sites that operate like that, but. You know what? What integrity do we have if we if we give away, um, you know, five star reviews like candy? Um, yeah, that, that just defeats the purpose of my van with the free candy sign. So I'm not doing it. Yep. Yeah. Um, have you considered a free ammo sign? No, because I'm looking for more females than males. So, oh. but that but that's just me. What could you put on it that would work better for the for the finer sex? I wonder. Candy, maybe chocolate. Ooh, free chocolate. Put free chocolate on, and uh, <laughs> free house Normal free house cleaning lattes. service. Normal lattes. <laughs> I was Dishes say lattes. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, yeah. All right. I uh, oh, what I meant to say was that doesn't sound legal or ethical. That's what I meant. I concur. Yeah. For shame. Yeah, pretty much. All right. So I'm going to talk about one that I'm kind of excited about. Um, you guys, you guys know that, that I have intense ADD and my mind goes off in different directions all over the place. I do a, a bunch of different things. And, uh, uh, so one of the things that I do is, uh, and I haven't done much backpacking lately, uh, last year or two, I've been too busy, but I have committed. Um, I think this is actually going to happen. Uh, something I did when I was 17 and I did again in 2017, um, you know, many, many, many years after I was 17 years old is I went to um, uh, a camp out in New Mexico. It's called uh, Philmont Scout Ranch and did... Um, uh, we we probably did over a hundred miles of backpacking through the mountains out there uh, on each of the, each of the times that I went uh, about 10, 10 or 12 days out in the field um, living out of backpacks. It's a pretty, for someone who doesn't backpack a lot, it's a really intense trip. So I run a Facebook group about prep for going to Philmont. And, and through that, I got invited to go on a trek this summer in June. So I may spend the second half of June out in New Mexico on the trail backpacking, in which case someone else is going to have to run the show for a week or two. So y'all just get ready for that. This article 
is uh, part of the Philmont series. So if you go under the camping section, I've got a Philmont section. It's got a bunch of different articles about Philmont, help people prepare. This is a guide to dealing with altitude sickness. And it, it applies no matter what you're doing. Like even if you're uh, you're going on an overlanded trip or you're going to be in an area that is at an altitude that's higher than what you're used to. Some of the things in here about how to acclimate to it and weaning off of caffeine, if that's something you're addicted to, like me, you know, staying hydrated, getting up to altitude slowly, giving your body time to acclimate. A lot of good tips in here that can be useful, even if you're not going backpacking at Philmont. So uh, this is by um, Scott O'Mary is, uh, he goes to uh, several of the different high adventure camps frequently and takes different scout groups to all of the different high adventure camps. And I kind of roped him into doing a little bit of writing. So we'll see some more from him soon. And uh, this would probably be something that, uh, might be more interesting to the crowd on the camping chat on Thursday nights versus versus here. But uh, you know what? We're going to share it anyway. What do we got here? I nominate Mining Ridge Armory. What would that be for? Oh, hold on. I'm trying to click it. There we go. That may be for uh, companies to interview. So. Yeah, we could do that probably. Maybe that you know, maybe that would be interesting. Get Toby on here and uh, have him talk about what he does at Mining Ridge Armory. I think we can do that. Yeah, that'll be good. Okay, moving on. Let me find another article. We did those. I think we are ready to do the fireside outdoor pop up fire pit. Yep, and it's up. Um, let's do it. So this little thing, at first we thought it was going to be cheesy and just flimsy. But so we had kind of put it off in the back burner and hadn't really thought about testing it uh, until I realized that it was cold. And so once we put this thing together, it burns with the fury of a thousand hills. Yeah. Um, it's, got a, it's basically a click-together pit. It's up high off the ground. It's a stainless steel mesh in the bottom. So the heat that comes from a small fire, even if it's just what? We have two logs in the first one. So even if it's just something like two logs, the heat that it puts out, I actually took my shoes and socks off and just put my feet under it. And it felt wonderful. Wow. Um, weighs seven pounds. Super easy to carry. You've got a little carrying bag. Uh, you can put it up in, what do we do, 30 seconds? Yeah, not long enough. It's, it's like 30 seconds to put up. As soon as the fire is out of it, it cools off in about 45 seconds, um, and you can pack it right up. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> eh. Well. You know, it looks like you guys had a little fun with that. Uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> You know, there, sometimes there's wardrobe malfunctions, guys. Come on. Right. <laughs> you know? yeah, My so, lovely husband does not hesitate to make sure that everybody sees that. I should have yeah. I should have edited it in hindsight, but I, I didn't catch it. It was the eye yeah. patch. It threw me off. So and who could blame you, right? <laughs> so, so if you hadn't watched the video yet i highly recommend you go out and watch the video oh i skipped past where it was being put together so um <laughs> but but it shows you know putting it together the first time there in the parking lot and then uh using it there at the campsite and building building a pretty impressive little uh log cabin fire that was kind of nice you know when you don't have jenga you use what you can yep yeah so go check out the video it's in the article the the YouTube video is embedded there in the article, so you can go read the article, learn everything you need to know about it. There's even links if you want to get one for yourself and then watch the video all in one place right here on Gear Report. Boom, right there. Yep. All right. So we're going to move on off of that one, and let me see what is left here. Oh, I think we've only got one left. So I'm closing windows frantically in the background here so I can get to 
clean it up the screen back here so now I can bring it to the Streamlight TLR RM1 Weapon Light Review. TJ, you did the RM2, is that right? Or did AJ do that one also? No, I did the, the RM2. Yeah, okay. So um, these came out of... These came out of the meeting we had with Streamlight at Shot Show. I had to think about okay, when did we, when did we talk to them? And we sat in the little conference room there at Shot Show, did the whole product, the brand overview with them, and negotiated who was getting what to review. And this one, uh, I think it's the last one on AJ's list to review, and he he liked it quite a lot. I mean, he gave it four out of five stars. And I think what I'm going to point out about this, it's a little big to put on a pistol because he tried, of course. Um, and he said it was a little big to fit on there. It's meant to go on a rifle, but this particular version, the RM1, is a lower lumen output so that you can use it in a house. Like if you're doing house clearing or home defense, this is more appropriate than the RM2 that has twice the lumens and it can blind you with the reflection off of white walls in the house. He, he thought this one was a little bit more appropriate for that kind of personal, you know, home defense, house clearing. Oh, look at that. He's got a P90. That sucker. He's got all the cool toys. <laughs> all right. So anyhow, you can go read about that there. Streamlight, you know, we got a great relationship with them. And uh, I can think all the products I've reviewed from them, I've only had one that didn't work out right. And it's uh, actually sitting up here. It's become a display because I couldn't get it to work. And I think that was an issue with the charger. And eventually they just gave up and said, you know what? J just don't worry about reviewing that one. Um, but otherwise, you know, every everything we've got from them has been really good. It's held up well. And uh, when we talk about Streamlight, we don't have to worry about the problem that plagues a lot of reviewers in this industry when they're reviewing flashlights. And that is... Batteries. No, it's not an Olight. So we don't have to feel like sellouts when we talk about it. You know? Because, um, hate to say it, Olight... Um, they tend to be a little shady, I think, in how they work with people to get reviews done and get information out in the market. So there, I said it. Okay, so that wraps up all of the current reviews that we've done. Before we move on to the other ones, let me search for one other thing here. And let's see. Share the screen. I'm going to come back to this one. Here we go. Can you guys see that? Yeah, the Gundies. The Gundies. So this is your your other daily reminder. I think I scheduled today's reminder for the afternoon. But um, anyhow, I wanted to ask everyone again, please go out and submit your votes. Uh, you can see this happens to be the most entertaining content creator category. And I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that uh, since we don't have anyone represented from the Gear Report uh, team on here, we're going to expand to the Gear Report family, which of course includes Dustin, uh, Top Shot Dustin. Dustin. So go, go toss Dustin a vote. He's crazy. And I think that by itself is worthy of getting a vote for the most entertaining content creator. I'm clicking on this categories back thing, trying to go back. It didn't work. In. Let me see here. Yeah. The site's a little janky sometimes. I, it is. I got, I got it is, it is not side. cooperating. I want to go to one of the categories that we're in and show people, and I can't get it to do it. So you're just going to have to trust me. Gear Report's been nominated in multiple categories. Um, neither of them most creative. Nope. That's not us. Influencer turned entrepreneur. Yep. That's not us either. So, uh, we are in the 
crossover, best crossover creator category. And we're in the most likely to survive an apocalypse category. So please consider voting for us in one of those categories. We would really appreciate it. You can vote every day. You can only vote once a day because this is not run by the Democratic National Committee. This is actually run by a legitimate organization that gives a shit about people. Oh, here comes the fact checkers. That's it. Oh. They're, they're going to be popping up everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Um, we need to ask them if they run the platform on a Dominion server. I'm not sure. If I take it out, we have to do That was weird. I heard a voice. I didn't see any lips moving. It was, it was Crystal in the background. She's being loud. Oh, man. Does she have a mute button? I wish. <laughs> <laughs> I said that out loud, didn't I? Um, I want to read a text that I just got a couple minutes ago uh, from Ruben that someone from Texas called to thank him for the live video and wanted to see uh, some more. Wow, that's pretty awesome. So he's getting uh, texts from people. And from what I read there, I'm not sure that he actually really knew the person. So I thought you were going to say that, that they could save him money on his car insurance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or um, renew his vehicle <laughs> warranty. Right. <laughs> I hate those calls. I get them from the office. I get them on the cell phone. I get them on, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And this is your final warning. You know, next time we're not going to call. I don't know. If I get a ham radio and someone dials me on a ham radio and says they want to talk to me about my car's insurance, I'm hunting somebody down. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be weird. <laughs> that would definitely be weird. Boycott the Gundies. I didn't get nominated. All right, here's the deal. And I'm being open about this. And Clover told me I'm crazy because no one admits this, right? But I, I like to be honest with everyone. I don't know how we got nominated. I don't know if anyone else nominated us. I do know that I nominated us because I wasn't going to take a chance that we didn't get nominated, right? All right. I got the note from them that said, would you like to nominate your brand? And I said, yes, please. <laughs> so yeah. you know, they asked. I said, sure, why not? Hopefully it uh, does something good for us. All right. So I think that wraps up all of the things that we have published. Let me look back through here. Yep, that covers all of them. Uh, so let me give you an update. Uh, we're going to roll into up to up. Wow, that's hard to say. Upcoming content, upcoming whatever. Yeah, we're going to roll into upcoming reviews and other content. And I'm going to kick it off with something I already touched on, which is the idea that I spent the an hour and a half before the show laying on the ground uh, over at James's shop under the Humvee um, watching him reinstall the transmission. So, uh, in theory, he should based, based on where he was when I left, he's probably out test driving the battle wagon three. Now, like as we're here live, he could very well be riding around town because, um, he's, he just had a couple things left to hook up and then put the transmission fluid in and it was time to go test drive it. So within a day or two, the battle wagon three might actually be back. And I shouldn't have said that because I probably just jinxed it. <laughs> and now it'll break at the end of his driveway and it'll be another month before it's done and ready. But at least in theory, we had some progress and we are a, a touch closer to getting the Battle Wagon 3 back. So once that happens, we'll be able to kind of kick that content into high gear. The other thing that I got to mention, um, I did something... I'm going to call it awesome. I, I did something awesome yesterday. Um, <laughs> other people might look at it and say it was closer to crazy. The the stupid has been thrown around by a person or two. You know, I'm am I offended by it? Yeah, but maybe it's true. Um, so I have got uh, 
So, so some of us may remember a few years ago we, uh, when we went to the Iraq veteran 8888 range day, we took a big military tent with us and it was kind of awesome. You know, Ruben brought his Humvee and we had the big army tent and that was gear report headquarters and everyone knew who we were and where we were. And it was awesome. We really enjoyed it. And I said, you know what? Josh was pretty awesome letting me borrow that tent. I've got to get a tent for the gear report team to use for this kind of event. So I've been watching the auction since then and they were too expensive. Well, yesterday I saw like a bulk buy opportunity where there were, I want, I want two, right? I want one to leave up in the backyard to store Humvee parts in. And I want one for us to use for events and maybe a third one to park the Humvee in. So three and one or two to put sailboats under for the Sea Scouts. But I, I want like half a dozen or less. That's it because they're <laughs> big. Um, but this was a deal, right? They were going for 500 bucks each, right? If I get a half a dozen of them, that's three grand. Well, for three grand, I got 22 of these tents and I am so stoked. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> now, when you add the auction fees, in the case, it's a little more than three grand. But the auction price, I did the minimum bid at three grand, and I was like, I'm not going to get these. Jeremy's face just gave it off. He's like, what? <laughs> He's like, Are yeah. you, you know you want one for the Jeeps. Your wife is going to kill you. You're going to have the entire yard you for the Jeeps. covered the, in military. The, this yeah. is the birth it of the right. Gear Report Army. Maybe, it is. Maybe yeah. you can create your own Maricopa <laughs> County style jail on your backyard. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> really fun. Think of this. You're going to look like COVID Central. They're going to think <laughs> Ground Zero has opened up in your backyard and yes. it's a testing facility. Oh, you know what? I feel so much better about this now. See, that's all I needed was to talk to my people. <laughs> and you guys made me feel so much better about this. Um, yeah, I was talking to James about, yeah, how am I actually going to go pick these up? And it, it, trying to work out a deal to use his trailers or something. I, I don't know what I'm going to do. Because unfortunately, these things are so big that they they come in two two packages, right? One of them is the tent and the other package is the liner. So they have you know dual layers, so you have an air gap in between, so it's like insulating. Um, the the outer portion with the frame is 200 pounds, the inner portion is like 130 pounds. And um, so so I'm thinking to myself, this wasn't a good idea, but uh, <laughs> but they look cool, they're awesome. So uh, but I got them cheap enough. That you know, by the time I get all the shipping, and I'm gonna, I'm literally gonna have to buy equipment so I can pit, lift them and roll them around the yard. By the time I spend some money on that, I'll probably be in them for four or five hundred bucks a piece. So you go look on eBay; they're twelve hundred bucks a piece, right? So I'll be able to sell them for much cheaper than that. Save some people some money, clear them out pretty quickly have some tents so I can set up my own Maricopa County jail. Cause I think that is a solid idea really. And, um, you, you know you what? Pink underwear too. <laughs> What's that? Pink underwear and shirt. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah. But it won't have the same effect cause I don't judge people the way they do out there, but, well, uh, but, so you, um, you paint half of them with the first aid symbol and the other half with the biohazard symbol and you can put them anywhere you want. No one's going to touch them. That's a good point. Oh, and also sitting on them like the ammo. Listen, I've been trying to sell that ammo and no one wants it. Everyone says they want it. But then when it's time to actually send money, nothing happens. Yep. Yep. Like the guy who said he was going to buy a set of Humvee doors from me. And I even gave him a discount. He's like, all right, you're going to buy them here. I'll give you 500 bucks off. Has the money shown up? No. It's buyers are liars. That's the truth. That's what Bump told me. For those of you who know Bump, Bump is crazy, but he's a smart dude. And he told me years ago, buyers are liars. And he was right. Okay. So you guys have heard what I have coming. Obviously, I'm going to have some military tent reviews coming. Uh, and hopefully, I'll have the Humvee back so I can review that. And I've got so much stuff that's piled up to put in the Humvee, to put on the Humvee, to put around the Humvee. 
And uh, so I got to get into that stuff. What do you guys have in your queues for reviews? I've got the, uh, I'm still at the DBX 5.7. I'm finishing up that. I went and shot it today again. The uh, Savage 110 Tactical in 6.5. Uh, I'm finishing up the uh, the EOTech the uh, EOTech five twelve. Yeah, yeah, that's a pretty good list. I like it. Yeah, keeps me busy. I got a couple of things on the DIY portion, a little bit of upgrades, uh, a DIY uh, adjustable uh, cheek rest for for a wooden uh, stock rifle. Yeah. Right. Uh, so we talked about that one last week, and I'll tell you, it's a very long article. And I spent a couple hours on that, um, let's say Wednesday, it would have been late last week, maybe some over the weekend too, and it's getting closer. Cool. Um, we're yeah, we're going to have to get together yeah. and talk about, uh, for, for TJ and Jose Juan, we're going to have to talk about how you import photos. Because if you do it, if you do it the right way, it's easy for me on the editing side. If you do it the other way, I have to go back and redo everything because it's it's harder than it, it's easier to redo it than to fix it. Okay. But yeah. Oh. Can you guys read this? Oh, it went away. Dang it. Let me get it back. Let me get it back. I saw that he's uh I could barely see the computer screen. You want me to be able to read that? Hey, cool your jets. Oh, can we get it up here? No, it won't focus. There we go. Well, I test drove your Humvee and couldn't break it, so it is good to go. Look at that. You guys are getting live updates here. Oh, I'm excited. Cool. That's good. You guys can't tell because the camera's up here, but trust me. Um, <laughs> all right. What what else is in people's queues? You got it? Um, we have a Ruck Rack, which is a new rack that um, came out this year from a company here in North Carolina. And it's mounted to our Jeep tire carrier. It works as a rack, a carrying rack and a table. Um, it's got all kinds of cool gadgets for the way that it works. And, so we've really put it through the ringer over the last few weeks with some of our trips and um, used it for several different things. So we've got a, a full review coming out for it. We also want to get the um, the company owner on here for a full um, interview. So I'd like to get with you, Jeff, so we can get make that happen um, in the next couple of weeks, get that scheduled. And then um, we also have um, some deep saddlebags as well as a Jeep attic those are two additions to our overlanding gear that's made um that's made uh saving space and and made it much 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 um easier or yeah a little bit cleaner in our pack out whenever we're um we're traveling so we're pretty excited about those so is the attic like a net that hooks up mm -hmm. in the roof and yeah and it uses, uh, yeah it's 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 uh, yeah, it's hung in with the with the with straps, and then it uses a paracord to loosen and tighten it based off how much is in there. So cool. we've, yeah, it's really cool. We've shoved pillows in there and and jackets, dirty clothes, and that sort of. Thing. So it's just a yeah, it's kind of a catch all. Neat. I've got one to go in the battle wagon. I haven't put it in yet, and I've been a little skeptical about. Eh, am I actually going to use it for anything? But. Based on what you're saying, maybe I move that up the list a little higher and get that installed a little sooner. Yeah, I mean, we've, you know, that's just it is at first we thought the same thing. What are we really going to use it for? But then now as we're going down the road, when, when, if we've got a loose towel or a loose jacket or hats or a loose whatever, it just kind of like, where are we going to put it? Like, sure. we'll just put it in the attic. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I was going to say your blow up sex doll, but you strap her <laughs> into the seatbelt, right? Are you going to show the new outfit? Would you like to see Donna's new outfit as of today? I don't know. Do would we? <laughs> we'll make it. We'll bring it next week. Okay. Good. <laughs> she got a new Christmas outfit. Oh, that sounds saucy. It is saucy. <laughs> <laughs> it's our rendition of Carol Baskin. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. So um, let's see. Is there anything else that we need to talk about in upcoming stuff? Oh, here's something. 
I got my new flag back here. Let me see. That way is probably better. Yeah. Okay. I hung it up sideways just because I don't have a good way to hang it otherwise. Um, but I'm pretty stoked. It's all embroidered and it's like really well done. So um, I'm kind of pumped about that. That uh, I say it's all embroidered. Yeah, it is. I thought I thought the letters were cut out and sewn on, but no, that is all completely embroidered. So kind of pumped up about that. Uh, it is kind of funny though that I don't generally fly that type of flag or put stickers or anything because I'd just rather people don't know. But that's kind of stupid when you drive a Humvee, though, right? Well, they all know, Jeff. They know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't usually leave the machine gun mounted in the back, though. So, how would they know? True. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Something else we hadn't talked about on here too much. Um, if you are on alternate social media platforms, so we're broadcasting on YouTube. A lot of people see us on Facebook and Instagram, uh, but may not know that we actually do post things on Twitter. Uh, we have a parlor account. If you're on parlor, then hit us up over there. We're gear, we're gear report on all the platforms. So we're easy to find. And, uh, let's see, parlor me, we, we have a me, we account. We're on gun streamer, huge tube bit shoot. If you're, if you, uh, check out videos on any of those platforms, so we're all over the place. If you're on any of those, please go check us out. Let us know you're there. Um, I'll tell you something else I have coming this weekend. I, it looks like I'm going to hook up with a company at the coast of North Carolina. Uh, I'm going to head out to Kitty Hawk and, um, they have a variety of some of the hottest, um, racing catamaran sailboats on the market right now. And, uh, the one that they invited me out there to um to video uh the one the one that they that they used to, to hook and get me to drive all the way out there is a complete carbon fiber uh it is like the hottest uh racing catamaran you know kind of smaller uh not the big yacht size but the little nimble fast boats uh uh that's on the market so i'm pretty jazzed up to get out um, i'm gonna have to break out Maybe maybe one wetsuit won't do it. I may have to put multiple wetsuits on because I am not going to risk getting so cold that, you know, too cold to eat. That sounded miserable. I'm not going to let that happen. Put your, put your heated jacket on. Oh, that's a good wetsuit. idea. Yeah. yeah. You know, I had to take it off for the show when I put my uh, when I put my Latino gang shirt on. I took off my heated vest. Um but no joke, man. I wear that thing every day. I've got a big battery pack for it, and uh, it is one of the greatest things ever. Good evening to you, Mr. Perkins. It's good yeah. to see you. Oh, and Honcho thinks so, too. What is this? I'm on Parlor, and you haven't friended me. I got to be honest with you, Mr. G23. I don't look at parlor as much as I should. I am trying to figure that platform out and, you know, how it works and all of that. And frankly, uh, it's, it hasn't impressed me too much yet. So maybe I need to spend more time at it. I don't know, but I will definitely uh, make an effort to log into parlor tomorrow and see if I can figure out, uh, why you haven't been friended yet. There's probably some sort of notification that I just hadn't seen yet, but uh, as far as you know, it wasn't on purpose. So, all right. What else shall we talk about? Anything? Man, you guys are chatterboxes. Okay. With that, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap it up then. I think uh, we've gone for 50 minutes and uh that, that's not too bad any nope. current event stuff anyone wants to talk about it's cold in florida. it's cold in florida it's cold in you florida. don't, you don't want to taunt the rest of us uh well mitch is in texas but uh you know care me jj me we're all in the the freshly minted communist state of north carolina no i, I was impressed that you'd be able to travel 
don't think you could do that. Um, <laughs> you know what's funny? Is, Where are your papers? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, they just put this curfew in place. And, oh. and you know, it hadn't even occurred to me that, you know, I, I got a lot of driving to do. Like if I go, if I make it a day trip to go to Kitty Hawk, I'm going to be up early. I'm going to be out late. It's going to be a long day. Yeah. That's going to mean I'm driving outside of the curfew. We're going to see and, Humvee going down I-26 being tailed by a bunch of cops. Yeah. And when they try to pull, pull me over, I'm going to stick my head out the window. Hopefully the camera is there to catch it. And, and I'm going to be screaming, screw you. Cooper, you know, Resist. yeah. <laughs> oh, our uh, our Obergruppenfuhrer Cooper is a jackass. To and that's you know what? That's not fair to to real jackasses to compare them to him. That that was an insult to jackasses to call him that. And uh, you know, I, I apologize, jackasses. Uh, you are nowhere near as bad as Roy Cooper, who um, you know I, I mentioned to someone on Facebook that he needs to be tarred and feathered. And to be honest, I don't know that that's really. I don't know that'd be enough to change to to make him realize how bad he's screwing the state, and that it's not appreciated. But you know, I I wish no ill will against any public figures, but I wish he would retire or resign or move away or take a three hour boat ride. Hey, I bet he'll um, I bet he'll I bet he'll turn his um, turn his shoes in in about four years. <laughs> mm. That dude, uh, oh, Defense Dad's with us now. Right as we're wrapping up and about to go, some more people show up. They might come in. We're throwing the jackasses around. Yep. You know what? It happens. It yeah. got lively. That's what happens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've had a we've had a rough week here in in North Carolina in terms of uh, insanity coming down from from on high in Raleigh, our capital city. But you know, we'll deal with it. Um, I'll whine about it because I can. But. Yep. You know, because we got a bunch of idiots who voted that jackass back in, so we're stuck Sorry. with it for a while. That, that's okay, Jeff. Did you notice that uh, Texas filed a lawsuit against all the states that were questioning the election? Yep. We ain't really? scared. We ain't scared. We'll go after other people. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Well, who knows what'll happen? But hey, Texas will do it. Yeah. Yeah. Fun stuff. Crazy boy. Okay, so. Final topic before we wrap up. What supplies are you looking to add uh, to help prep for the uh, impending civil war? Bourbon. Bourbon. Okay. <laughs> what other supplies? What else do I need? I mean. yeah. <laughs> Extra chocolate and candy for my van. Toilet paper. <laughs> we use dude wipes. <laughs> and well, she warned me to watch the damn mushroom stuff when I went. Dude wipes. Ugh. All right. Until you do it, once you switch, you'll never go back, Jeff. Oh, that's not true. Way to go. No, I've evolved past that. You know this. See, you guys, you guys keep forgetting. People make fun of me because I am a bidet advocate. <laughs> but step up your game, but at the end of the day, here's the deal. Can we be honest here? Well, I'm going to be blunt and honest, and it may make some people blush. But here's the deal. I think a lot of people have got the bidet wrong. In their head, they think you're squirting water up your butt. But you don't. If you're yeah. doing that, you're doing it wrong. Okay? Oh, but Jeff, it's oh so right. Spray it off. Okay? <laughs> you're not injecting water under the skin of your hands when you wash them, are you? No, it's just like washing your hands. You just spray your hiney off, all right? If you are getting it straight up there, you are doing it wrong. If you are like, no, I'm not going to do that because I don't put things in my butt, you know what? You're doing it wrong. Rinse it off. That's all you got to do. All right. If you want to do dude wipes, you are a step in the right direction. You'll get there eventually. You will be evolved at some point. 
we're just poor. We'll get <laughs> one when we can. Hey, if it's you're poor, man, just do, do like what my dog does every once in a while. Just drag his butt on the grass. Oh, I thought you were going to talk about that and he licks himself. But no, <laughs> I think no, no, I've no, tried no. that, man. I can't reach. I can't reach. <laughs> <laughs> if I could do that, I wouldn't waste my time with this show. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> being Tijuana making real money <laughs> ain't that the truth yeah I, I have that girl that does magic with a stack of quarters and man we'd be raking in the dough <laughs> mm. yeah all right we stayed yeah. on the rails longer than expected today but went ahead and went went clean off yep. before we hard, wrapped things up you took a hard right. left yeah. <laughs> yeah it's all right all right. Well, with that, I think we're going to shut her down. So, everyone, thank you for coming. Um, any any final thoughts from anyone here on the panel? Anything you got coming up that you want to point out? Uh, Karami, you have any big videos or anything coming? I know some stuff you post on Gear Report, some things you don't. You have any big stuff showing up on your site? So, we've got um, – I'm doing the editing right now for our big 410-mile off-road trip. Um, mm -hmm. I'm about halfway through it. That's a ton. And then we've got some, this place that we just stayed, it's a place in Fletcher, North Carolina on the continental divide. Um, it's an Airbnb. So you guys can stay there. Um, they built this new tree house that's on pivots. So as the wind blows, it actually swings in this tree, which is terrifying. Um, yeah. or there, there'll be a video, an episode coming out where we do the tour and I freak out a little bit because I'm afraid of heights. Um, mm -hmm. So, so we've got two videos coming up. Uh, hopefully, I'll have it in the next week. Uh, that's a slow process for me. All right. Yeah. Hey, I completely understand. I just uh, I've been using the same editing software for several years, and um, a company offered me, you know, hey, can we send you our software to try? And I said, yeah, why not? I've been using the same thing for so long. Let me try something different. It's got some different features. I'm telling you, this thing's kicking my butt trying to figure it out. So um, editing video is hard. I don't think people really appreciate how, how much of a challenge it is. So good on you for stepping up and figuring that out. Um, all right, folks, I think that's it for now. We'll see you back here um, next Wednesday at 8 o'clock. I don't, does anyone know Pickle's doing a show tomorrow? I don't think I've seen anything about it. Nope. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like no camping chat this week. It's camping. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So, everyone, don't forget, let me know what brands you would like to see us do some interviews uh, with, and uh, we'll get those scheduled. Who knows? It's only Wednesday. It could be that something pops up uh, in the next day or two, and maybe we fill that Monday time slot again and, and get another one out before the show next week. So check us out on uh, any of the social media, and that's where we're going to announce as these things come up on the schedule. So, um, oh, hold on. That was the wrong one. I did not mean to put that one on the screen. Although, who cares? I'll own it. <laughs> shows could be entertaining. I'm not even sure what that means, but it sounded like fun. Um, Glock. I don't have a contact at Glock. Here's the funny thing. Um, and, and I'm sure I can figure that out. Uh, Trey and uh, so Ghost and Clover and a couple other people went to the Glock party at SHOT Show this year. I have actively avoided doing anything with Glock because while I have a Glock and I have carried a Glock for a couple decades, they're boring and I'm in the interesting business. So I've had no desire to spend any time on Glock. Everyone and their brother wants to cover them. They can do that. We'll move on to other things. That's been my approach. But maybe it would be nice to, you know, don't, don't laugh, Poncho. Come on. Maybe it would be nice to get someone from Glock on to chat a little bit. So you know what? I am going to put them on the list to reach out and see if we can get them to come on and chat with us. So um, I think that's going to be it for now. Thanks to everyone on the panel. Thank you to everyone out there in the chat. If you hadn't given us a thumbs up yet, if you hadn't clicked the, the subscribe and the notification bell, please consider doing all those things. Or if you don't like us, give us a thumbs down. You know what? If you got the stones to do it, go ahead and do it. 
that's fine. I'm down with that. Whatever you do, we're glad you were here. Thanks for spending the evening with us, and we'll see you at the range. <laughs>